Hello and welcome, dear human family and our dear community of the Gnostic Takeover. You lock us down, we take you down. And what better way to take them down than aligning with morality, moral code. And that comes via the form of principles. Principles first, the most important knowledge. So we want to start and focus today on the four main principles of Gnosticism. Where, Errol, I would like you to share how how you can, because I got to know this through you, the structure and the order of these principles. And I would really like you to share with the community. Mm -hmm. How did you come to realize the importance of this? And what do these principles mean for you? Well, first of all, we can talk about um, where these principles come from. Um, so we talk about what Gnosticism is, Gnosticism is and Shamanism is. Gnosticism basically is shamanism. So these are principles of shamanism, which is um, simply to be connected to the source which created you so that you can decode the instruction, the codes, which are instruction codes for life, the blueprints for life, which comes from the source which created you which comes through the earth and is um, embodied in you as a human being. So we're talking about principles here of life, of humanity, being human and being a member of the uh, animal family, which um, is a part of the earth and creation. And principles are basically moral codes we're talking about, which we always talk about. So the main, main, the four main principles of Gnosticism is basically, um, we can talk about the first one. Yeah. Before we do that, I would like to put a little bit of an emphasis on what you just said, because that is extraordinary. And what I like about this is your sure. definition of shamanism. And Gnosticism, Gnosticism being shamanism and the connection to the natural world and the codes, the codes of the source and aligning with the source. That is amazing. That is groundbreaking because it looks like shamanism is not this exclusive club of shamans. Oh, what do you do as a profession? Well, I'm a shaman and this sort of perverted inverted and distorted picture yeah. that has been presented as shamanism that has nothing to do with shamanism i just want to point that out uh, which is just pure new ageism which is rubbish it's full of crap uh, it's run by the archons themselves new ageism it's got nothing to do with shamanism we're talking about real shamanism here now you know and this is what i love and i'm so Thankful to the one and only highest source for bringing me together with Errol because I had no idea about shamanism before I met Errol. And through Errol, true shamanism, true Gnosticism is coming back. And that is the worst nightmare to the enemies of life. Just to piss the enemies of life off even more, um, Ayahuasca brings us teaching about other beings, other plants, other spirits on the earth, okay? It, it, it teaches us about ourselves. And the Atura gives us power, which is true power. There was an amazing quote we picked up on yesterday, wasn't it? About uh, From Carlos Castaneda. What was that about again? Carlos, according to Carlos Castaneda, um, Datura is not for healing, it's for power. <laughs> yeah. And it's no surprise. Our power and our um, 
projection of power is uh, visible in our videos, I think. Isn't that right, Steve? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Beautiful. So let's move, shall we, to the first principle of Gnosticism. Okay. The first principle of Gnosticism is detection. Detection in the sense of to be able to detect an external force which doesn't belong here to this terrain. So first of all, we've got to be familiar with our terrain, which we call the earth, which is our home, so that we can recognize what doesn't belong here. And this is obviously based on moral code once again, the principle of detection, very closely related. So you detect, what are you detecting? An intrusion, a threat, which is coming from an outside force, which doesn't belong here. So that's the first step and the stage of um, the whole process, which is, which is the detection, to detect a threat, which could pose as a threat to yourself, your family, your territory, your terrain and the earth and all your other fellow human beings, or your tribe, your community, whatever you want to call it. Do you have anything to add to that, Steve? I would like to also add into there another principle of Gnosticism is discernment. And right. in that regard, the detection right at the beginning of... Um, it's, it has to do with consciousness because everything is conscious. And to be able to discern between different fields of consciousness. So there is an artificial field of consciousness, a foreign intrusion, and there is a natural field of consciousness. So the artificial field, the foreign intrusion that needs to be detected in order to keep the protection going and to not have um, anything exacerbate and escalate it's important to discern between the artificial field of the matrix and the natural field of consciousness that originates directly from the source of all creation yeah and i would also like to add the fact that this is also a principle of the care of love you see it's this comes from pure love to feel the need to detect a threat to what you love so that you can protect that love mm -hmm. beautiful yeah and we also relate the eagle to this um uh, principle as well because the eagle is a master of detection it soars above the skies is constantly alert and aware of everything in its environment. Nothing escapes the perception and the awareness of the eagle. So now we can, uh, I think, move on to the second principle. Which also stays with the eagle. And I also want to mention here that we saw two eagles fly today. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. We heard the eagle spirit already yesterday as we were walking. Mm -hmm. And it showed itself today. Yep. So the eagle is with us. It, this, you see from... It's coming from the eagle. There's a, a perfect exemplification, okay? The difference between the, the artificial field of the matrix mm. and the natural field of consciousness originating from the source of all creation directly. So the matrix will want us to believe in signs mm. that things are moving forward by reading something in the news. Oh, yeah, you see, we're winning. Some doctor said this or some lawyer said that. Oh, we're winning and now we've got hope. However, the way it really works is when you don't engage yourself with any of that stupid media or matrix or noise and just shut yourself completely out from it and just go into yourself and your environment and your terrain and spend time on the land and with yourself and don't look into anything, okay? Then you sharpen your awareness so that you're able to pick up 
energetically and sense things which are happening in your environment which are not supposed to be happening so basically what i'm saying is you see what's going on without seeing because you feel it and that's a principle of protection you see oh yeah the that's sensuality the, it's like a sensory system you feel feeling is true seeing mm. not with your own two physical eyes you see we see through feeling mm. i really love that a sensory system and intuition yep it's our natural sensory system which is feeling boy has that been distorted hasn't it a big time with um with distractions mm. you know um distractions of the matrix what we call the system the control system the artificial the ai the technology the media the all the noise of the matrix basically the circus which we call and to know that things are moving exactly in the right direction you see we don't look for signs in the matrix in the internet in the news feedback loop of the matrix but we see the eagle in the sky that shows us yeah big sleighs on the horizon and that's how we know that there's a threat because we are able to detect it's a skill we have it's a discernment that we have so to the next one right the second principle of narcissism once we've detected the threat then obviously what we need to do is decode to see what it is to understand the nature of the threat where it's coming from and what it is and this is this is the full decoding and understanding of what the threat is basically mm -hmm. right only then can we know what to do about the threat and how to deal with it once you've decoded it and um the process the, the decoding process can look very different in uh, each situation what we normally do is um from where we've detected the threat we pick it up and we start decoding and we tie it into past events and how they have uh, occurred in what sequence they have occurred and which event has led to what event and that event has um, led to which other event in the right sequence okay like connecting the dots basically decoding and then seeing the full overview picture of where the threat is coming from and what it is like the eagle vision once again it's the overall vision right so this is where it started where it came in like when here jump to this person jump to that person they did this they did that and now we're in this situation and this is what it is so what we're going to do here is we're going to stop it right here we're going to mm. we're going to slay it it's a decoding of the field that's what it is that's where yep. you become they they termed it the cia termed it conspiracy theories or conspiracy theorist is actually dot connecting and being able to decode the field namely the field mm -hmm. of wetica and it, this is also a principle which the satanic criminal mafia network which runs the world has also um hijacked and inverted and stole it and they're using it for their own causes um they've called it intelligence agency you see national security this is where it all comes from guys this principle here decoding the natural field while when you exhibit intelligence and intelligence in decoding and being able to take care of yourself and your environment the people you want to protect mm -hmm. they invert that and call that psychotic yeah because they hate it because it's a great danger from them for, for them that's why they make it illegal to be the eagle that's where illegality comes from 
they really afraid of us being the eagle and having the overall vision of the eagle, the thunderbird medicine, which we call the e the medicine of the eagle. They really, really, it really shits them up because with that principle, you can see everything they're doing. Mm. And obviously they don't want that. So they've got to hijack it and invert it and use it against us and put it into their law principles as well, which is fake, obviously, and call it legality. And this is the single most important thing when you are in a situation that we are on the earth right now, okay, are these principles. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of these principles because this, when we talk about hidden information, when we talk about the, the top, okay, the top of the information pyramid, these principles are right there, aren't they? Right at the top, the four main principles these are. Everything else comes secondary. These are, th this is crucial. Without these four principles, nothing else would exist. That's why we give this further, because there you can shove any movement up your ass. It doesn't matter what the masses are doing, or we hope that things get better. You have it all under your command when you use these principles. You'll be able to navigate through the matrix and get your instructions, your codes directly from the source. Mm -hmm. And that will show you your journey through the matrix. This is an awakening process. This is the only way awakening can happen and can occur. occur. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, it all ties into, once again, uh, moral code. This all comes from moral code, from being moral, knowing what your morals are, knowing what your duties are, to yourself and your life and, and all life. So we come to the next where it like the energy sort of shift away from the eagle more into the jungle. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is what we call the defection process where we defect, eliminate and get rid of the threat. Once we've decoded it, we've seen where it's coming through, we've decoded it for what it is, we've identified it, and now we're going to defect it, eliminate the threat, okay, so that it never occurs again. So what we're going to do is, strategically, we're going to slay what we call slay the shit out of it. Yeah. And this slaying doesn't have to look chaotic at all. This is we slay in an intelligent way. And if it has to be slayed physically, then it will be slayed physically as well. It depends on the nature of the threat. However, when your detection, okay, we come right back. When your detection, as well as your decoding skills are right, aligned with moral code, and you're able to do this, mm -hmm synchronistically in a harmonic wave of decoding the defect the defection phase will not include the physical defection the physical slay because you, the quicker your decoding is the quicker you can get rid of the threat with pure intelligence absolutely absolutely no physicality needed that's why when we say we go for the kill it ain't going to be physical no People ain't even going to know that we did it. Exactly. They're just going to start hearing stuff on the news and that's all. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, people are just dropping like that. But uh, I think I've heard that before also that suddenly someone who's never shown signs of suicide has just committed suicide. Or with this gene therapy, people also just drop like that. I thought that, I thought that was completely normal. Yeah. So this is how it works, defection through use of plant medicine. Absolutely. Or in other words... Shamanic practices. Exactly. Or in other words, the defection is also the sword. Yep. You cut the cords. You cut the energetic cords. 
It's the sleigh. Yes. It could look like anything, depending on the fret, as we say. Yeah. And it's right. so important to, for one's own energetic state to defect all the relationships. Okay, mm -hmm. that's why we talk about power. Power is a relational phenomenon. So you could have relationships in your life that actually when you look deeper, when you detect and decode, you can see that there's an energy harvest happening. Yep. And um, I would like to relate this defection process to um, the spirit of the jaguar or the lion, but I prefer the jaguar because the jaguar speaks through me. <laughs> <laughs> as the eagle speaks through and sees through Steve. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm the human embodiment of the jaguar. So the spirit of the drag jaguar dwells within me as well as my own spirit too. So that's why I know about this stuff. I'm talking through spirit. That's Gnosis. And through the sharing, you see, this is, again, we come back to co-evolution. What really is the basis of the natural field of consciousness originating directly from the source of creation. We can share those principles. My eagle vision on overviewing the landscape with the on the ground, <laughs> the power. The, the, the true power, original power of the Jaguar, we can merge that mm -hmm. and both become the Jaguar and the Eagle. So this is all pure natural intelligence, guys, okay? It's divine intelligence of natural order, divine natural order, which they fear very much. That's why they demonize it. So the um, detection and the decoding process they would like to name it psychosis, okay? Which is what they usually try to frame Steve with unsuccessfully, being the demented fucks that they are. And the defection process, which is more of the, uh, the Jaguar principle, which savors the shit out of the threat, basically, and eliminates it, is... Um, they like to label it as violent and psychopathy and narcissism and all this stuff, basically. You see? So, so we call it out now so that people can know. All right. So let's head to the fourth. Seal and protect. This is the final process the final stage of the whole process once we've eliminated the problem the threat what we do is we seal and protect the situation so that we can make sure that it never occurs again and then we never forget about how it happened so that we learn from the situation and the next time it occurs we don't even let it in this is the final seal and protection phase mm. so that it never occurs again. And as you can see, my friend in the picture, he's just dealt with the situation, made a massive sleigh, and now he's come to the riverside to have a nice little drink of water, you know, naturally just chilling, relaxed, unfazed. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. So we're integrating these principles right back into us. And the more we talk about it, the more you do it and it just becomes a natural process. Mm -hmm. You see everything, then this is the, the, the principles and the workings of Gnosis. Your consciousness gets sharpened like a sharp blade, like a sword. Forged. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The more it's practiced, the more you forge your skills. These are skills. And everything becomes a holistic field. You're transcending out of the matrix as is portrayed here. The classic symbol of Gnosticism, classic picture of Gnosticism. And 
This is true warriorhood, isn't it, Steve? This is the true warriorhood. Not how the new new age spirituality community and movement wants to frame it as sitting cross-legged in the Buddha position, just ah peace. That's not peace being a peaceful warrior at all. This is what it is, what it means to be a proper warrior. Mm. To embody these principles and to be capable of applying them all the way mm. when necessary. And through applying these principles, the life force flows through you. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the news becomes irrelevant. Because you are the news, you know? You, it's coming from you, you know? You're making it all happen. You're responsible. This is why we say we're responsible for this reality, because we, we embody these skills. We're aware of them and we practice them daily. All day long, we're just sealing and protecting threats and we're decoding to minimize them. That's our job, right, Steve? Exactly. Transcending the matrix, and it is an individual journey which again links to the principle of the one. Mm -hmm. We are transcending out of this matrix, and we're, we are outside of that bubble, speaking to you right now. This is capstone duty. Yeah. That's why we say, that's, this is why we can say, we're in command, we're in charge. Things like, this is my domain. Everything runs under my command. I'm in charge, not them. Who are they? They're nothing. They're nothing, exactly. They're running around like headless chickens, running around in the bubble, all right, trying to get to people like me and Errol who are outside of the bubble that we call the new signal. Yep, because this is the new signal which we're speaking of, which is simply the mind of the source itself. We're embodiment of physical embodiment of the source. It's working for us. We embody the mind of the source. That's where the decodings, the instructions, the commands are coming from. That's why we say we command. True, that's, that's how we can talk about true power and say that True power is to know that you're in command. And who is anyone to tell you otherwise? Exactly. Anyone has to show up in your reality loop and show you proof of claim in the form of evidence that that is not so. We don't have to prove anyone anything. If anything, you have to prove to us that we are not. We don't have to prove anything. We're already proving it by being it. So anyone in the network got a problem with it, like the network, you have to prove to us that that's not the case. And you see, that is the dilemma. That is where the pedo-satanic criminal network is at war with the truth. It's a cul-de-sac for them. Yeah. And what we call a shachmat, a signal Checkmate. outside of the bubble that tells the bubble what the matrix is and how this world, this planet, runs very different to how you thought it works. But all of you in the bubble, you're just low-level initiates and we are the initiators, the pioneers of the new earth just as the bubble is depicted in this picture here and the two people looking outside peering outside of the bubble who are breaking free of the bubble of the matrix all symbolic that's why we use this picture exactly so any more you like to add to this nothing really uh i think we've i've said uh what i need to say and uh, nothing comes to my mind at the moment. I'm happy with what I said. And uh, 
the rest is up to the people to make what they want of the information once again. We have a moral duty to communicate this information to all of you. It is up to each individual to apply these principles in their own lives and see the awakening process reach whole new levels instead of looking for the rhinophil mix or any other who wants to fuel mick fool me no more nosticos i don't know it better i'm telestar yeah and if you're a david Icke fan you can ask him about these principles too see what he has to say or i don't know maybe you can ask max egan as well maybe he knows some stuff about this stuff as well this is but, when we say the solution is the heart. Eckhart Tolle may know. Yeah, you can ask Eckhart Tolle maybe. Hmm? <laughs> this is the solution of heart-centered intelligence. That's this is what we're talking about. This is what we call planetary intelligence. Defense. Yeah. So till next time, take very good care, all of you. And may the force of all creation and the one and only highest source be with you.